headaches, drowsiness, nausea, poor concentration? Do me a favor and crack a window. We're gonna need some fresh air for this video. As you know, carbon dioxide is what humans breathe out. Not to be confused with carbon monoxide, which is what your engine breathes out. One is a notorious killer, while the other rarely crosses anyone's mind. But today I'd like to change that. There are more and more studies being published bringing the effects of elevated carbon dioxide levels to light. Stay tuned and we'll run a few tests of our own, but first we need to familiarize ourselves with the healthy and unhealthy carbon dioxide levels. As with most pollutants, carbon dioxide is typically measured in parts per million. Atmospheric CO2 levels are just over 400 parts per million and have been rising at an alarming rate ever since the Industrial Revolution, but that's not a topic for my channel. In an occupied indoor space, any level under 1,000 parts per million is considered normal and safe. Anything between 1,000 and 2,000 parts per million is where you'll start getting complaints of drowsiness. And 2,000 to 5,000 parts per million is where you'll start hearing about headaches, nausea, and loss of concentration. And once you top 5,000 parts per million of CO2, that's when you need to be on the lookout for oxygen deprivation symptoms. Of course, all of these depend very heavily on your exposure time. As far as deadly levels of exposure go, you would have to jump up to 40,000 parts per million, which isn't going to happen in a natural environment, but it does happen and it has claimed lives. But enough on that, let's go for a ride. Now, I'm not made of money, so the van's staying parked for this one. Let's see what we have in the garage that might save us some gas. Okay, we have four adults in this 2012 Toyota Corolla. You can see our current CO2 level under 500. We all just hopped in. We're gonna be in here for around two hours going to Long Beach, the port of Los Angeles, get on a cruise ship for a week. We've got four 20 somethings here in the car and yours truly. So let's keep an eye on these CO2 levels. We will uh, go ahead and just put the car and recirculate for a while and see if we die. update we're coming up on 5,000 parts per million uh, yeah we'll see if I can do a blood oxygen reading or not while we're driving welcome to the LA basin here's some smog and we are still recirculating with the AC on it's been about 40 minutes now and we're up to 7,000 parts per million. I'll try to do a blood oxygen level reading. Again, it's only been 40 minutes, so I don't expect anything crazy. If it'll work at all, let's try. Okay, here is uh, one hour in, we're around 6,000. I guess that's what we're gonna plateau at. I'll do another uh, blood oxygen reading, see what the deal is. Let's check it. Okay, yeah, still fine. All right, now we're in the LA Basin. Welcome to Smogville. It's been about an hour and 10 minutes. And, oh, yeah, we're getting up there, 6,700. Here we are an hour and a half into the trip. Yeah, I'd say we pretty much plateaued around 7,000 parts per million for CO2. Uh, we'll do another blood oxygen level check. All right, well, we are in Long Beach now. It's an hour and 45 minutes, and we're up at 7,700. Um, <laughs> 
yeah, I'll do another blood oxygen check. Usually it takes a few hours for anything to kick in, but yeah, you can see our lovely okay. smog down here. Okay, there's our cruise ship. It's been two hours on the road. Our CO2 levels are at 8,100. Uh, yeah, an extended period of time like that could cause trouble, but it's only been two hours for us in here. I'll do one more blood oxygen reading, and that's gonna be it for this portion of the video. So do what you will with that information. I'm curious to hear everyone's thoughts on these readings and whether you think it's valuable or not. And I can also already hear the requests coming for an overnight test inside the van. It's on the way. But for this video, that's it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as usual, I'll see you next time.